Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. Lately, I've been doing a lot of videos about Antex Linux. And the other day, I did a video showing how I fixed the high CPU usage. So a viewer wrote in and said, how did you discover what was causing the high CPU usage? What was running in the background? And I thought, oh no, <laughs> I forgot to show that in the video. So today I'm gonna to make a video. I'm gonna show you how I discovered what was consuming my CPU. And also I'm gonna show you something else. So when I fixed the high CPU usage, the volume control disappeared. So Antex Linux has a volume control that sits in the bottom bar and it even works in the awesome window manager with my configuration file. And I really like that volume control. So when I turned off Pipewire, which was consuming my CPU, that also got rid of the volume control and I couldn't figure out how to get it back. And then I thought, well, hey, I like the volume control, but it's a small price to pay for turning off the thing that was causing my CPU to go really high in the host machine and in the guest machine. Well, today I figured out how to fix the volume control as well. So I'm gonna show you that in this video too. So let's get to it. So I'm in a virtual machine of Antex Linux and I reversed everything. So you can see the CPU, look at this, it's running at 49%, 37, 43, 47, 48. See how high the CPU is? And it's causing the CPU to be run high in my host machine as well. And I can't show you the host machine because uh, I'm running OBS Studio, so of course the CPU is going to be extra high. So how did I discover it? That's what the uh, person who wrote in to me asked, how did I figure out what was running high or what was causing the CPU to go high? So I right clicked on my menu here. I went up to applications. And I went down this menu to system. And I went into system into this menu and I went to task manager. Clicked on task manager, made that full screen. And you can see right here, wire plumber was causing the high CPU. See, 18% and 17%. What was that's why my CPU is running at 41%, 45%, 39%. So I highlighted it and then I right clicked and I clicked on kill. And this box came up. Let's just move it over here. Really kill the task? And I said, yes. And there it did, it killed it. Now let's close down task manager and look at this. My CPU is at 0%. Now, the person's asking, how did you figure that out? Well, when I did a couple of videos ago, when I made the video complaining about the high CPU usage, two people wrote into me and asked, did you try to find out what was causing the CPU to go so high? What was running in the background? And I ignored them because I thought, ah, why should I have to do that? If I do, if I install a distribution and do an and it's working fine and do an update, the CPU shouldn't be running high after the fact. It's supposed to be an easy to use distribution, good for old computers. So I went a couple of weeks and I even wrote back to them and said I shouldn't have to do that. But then after a while I thought maybe I should look into it and see what it is. So this is how I discovered what was causing it to run high. But then I thought, but if I reboot, it's gonna turn it on again. So then I went into the settings, I went into control center, because I know there's a lot of configuration files in here. And I went into, in previous videos, I went into the configuration files and changed a lot of things to the way I like it to be. So I went in here and I couldn't find anything because I wanted to make sure it didn't turn on when I rebooted the system. Now there is something in here, but I couldn't find it. So what I did was I closed this window and I went into App select. 
and there's a search field here and I typed in PIPE and this came up. Enable Disable Pipewire Audio Server. So really I just found this by accident. So I double clicked it and there's a box here that says to turn it off. So now it's off and I now you can see my CPU is down, right? It's at 1%. So I turned it off, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. And I rebooted. So let's reboot. So this is how I did it in my last video. And let's hit enter. Let's put my encryption password in. So it's almost like I'm redoing the video. <laughs> so let's put my password in. And the wallpaper is a bit off. Let's just uh, restart the session. And of course the conky is not there because I changed the configuration file so that the conky doesn't turn on when I reboot the system or on a fresh boot. So let's turn it on. I just want it to be on. So I'm going to go to desktop and then let's do here. Right click it. Go to desktop. Conky on or off. So now we see the CPU is still low. Everything works. Now, in the last video of Antex, I showed you how to go into the awesome window manager and turn off pipe wire from starting on a reboot. So today I'm not going to go into the awesome and show you that. Now you can see there's no volume control. So the CPU is fixed, but there's no volume control. So I thought, hey, it's a small price to pay. I like the volume control because the volume control was working in the awesome window manager as well, even though I have my own configuration file in there. So I liked it, but I figured, hey, that's a small price to pay for getting the CPU down in the host machine and in this guest machine. So now I figured out how to fix that. And this is what I did. So now in order to fix the volume control, and I just figured that out today, what I did was I went into control center, went into session, I went into user desktop session, and I scanned down. So now you see, because we turned pipe wire off using that GUI with toggling that switch, you can see pipe wire is commented out. But the volume control is still commented on. But how come it's not working? That doesn't make sense. The volume icon is on but it doesn't work in IceWM or in my awesome window manager. And pipe wire is off. Now it says here, uncomment of using pipe wire. You need to install it. Make sure it starts before the volume icon. Okay, so right here it says, make sure it starts before the volume icon. So this is not starting because we turned it off. We went into the GUI and toggled it off. So, and you can also see it's commented out here now. So it's not starting. So if this doesn't start, the volume icon is not gonna start even though it's activated or not commented out, if you follow what I'm saying. So I thought, well, what can I do? And it says the same thing about Pulse Audio. Uncomment of using Pulse Audio. You need to install it. Make sure it starts before the volume icon. So even though the volume icon is turned on, it, that line is activated. It's not commented out. It's not going to work. The volume icon is not going to work when you boot up the system because I don't have Pulse Audio installed. And pipe wire is installed, but I have it turned off. So, and just to show you, and I actually showed you in the other video. Um, let's open up Brave Browser. Applications, Internet, let's go to Brave Browser. These are all the lovers of DevOne. And like I said, I don't know if it's pronounced DevOne or Debian. But hey. So, you can see the volume is working. Now, the sound is bad because OBS is not recording from my sound card because I have that turned off. So when I was playing Brave Browser, it was recording the video from Brave Browser through my speaker into the microphone. And that's why it sounded 
awful. So this is how I fix the volume control. Right click this and I go to app select. I type in synaptic, whoops, package manager, click it on, go into search, typed in pulse audio. And let's just bring it down. And I didn't remove pipe wire, but I clicked on this one. Pulse audio marked for installation, mark it, and I applied it. Because when we were in that configuration file, we could see that you had to have either pulse audio or pipe wire starting in order for the volume control to start and be activated. So that's done. Whoa, that was fast. Okay. So let's close this. Let's close this one and let's reboot. So now we're rebooting and everything should be working. Let's put my password in. Let's put my password in. And there it is. The volume control is working. Now let's just uh, turn on Conky because I have Conky turned off because I don't normally use it. I don't particularly like it. So I went into the configuration file a few videos ago and turned it off. So let's go back to um, desktop and let's turn it on. So we can see our CPU is down really low. And now the volume control is fixed. It's there. Okay. Now let's log into Awesome and see if it's still there. So I'm going to go to Desktop, Other Desktops. Let's go to Awesome. And there it is. The volume control is working in the Awesome Window Manager. Okay. So let's go to Brave. Let's go to YouTube. Let's see if this volume control is working. So we can see the volume control is working. And of course the sound is terrible because OBS is not recording from my sound card. I have that turned off and it's control. OBS is recording from the speakers to the mic. So that's why the sound is terrible. Let's put the volume control up. And I do a lot of videos about integrating Let's shut yeah. that. Oh, and one more thing I want to do is let's go to HTOP. While we're in the awesome window manager, and we can see the processes are quiet. It's running at 230 megabytes of RAM out of my four gigs of RAM, and the processors are quiet. That's it. In this video, I went through in detail how I discovered application was running in the background and causing my CPU to run high and how I killed it. And I went through again, as I did in the last video, how I turned it off. And I showed how I fixed the volume control so that once I turned off pipe wire with the high, that was causing the high CPU, I was still able, I'm still able to have the volume control in a default window manager and in my awesome window manager. I hope you learned something today and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.